I mean, this guy's a monster. Absolute monster. And, monster. You, and you have to, uh, you know, I think what, if I'm understanding, you're warning against is making sure that people know that. Monsters are coming. Monsters are coming. Nazis are coming. Um, communists are coming. Islamic extremists that want to caliphate are coming. If the American people and the rest of the normal world doesn't stand up now and get this car off and uh, get to an exit, monsters will are in our future and they will take control. It happens every time. I, I'm trying to remember the name of this um, book that I'm reading right now. I'm reading uh, by it's by Eric Lawson. Uh, can you look that up? It's something on um, the Garden of the Beasts, I think the name of it is. And it is... Um, in the Garden of Beasts? In the Garden Love, of Beasts. Terror and an American... Yes, yeah, Rise of Nazi Germany. It's unbelievable. I think it's a New York Times bestseller now. It's unbelievable. Um, it, it, it shows how the German people wanted to believe. And they, they're, they're saying that even Hitler... Even Hitler at one point said um, the people are um, turning on themselves and they are they're just bad people. That we are, we are looking at a society that has grown very dark. And he just capitalized on it. And the people were eager to help him do it. Eager. And those who didn't want to help him do it, um, they, uh, they just thought it would get better. I just get better. It won't. It won't get that. It won't get that bad. Europe is about to go into darkness again. America must turn on the light. You must turn it on in your own life, and we'll be giving you ways to do that. First step is um, eight twenty four Israel. Please reach out to your house of faith, your house of worship. Reach out to a synagogue. This isn't being just pro Israel. This is being pro-Jewish as well and pro-human. Human. We don't do this to anybody. It, it's imperative that you turn on the light and crank it up. Light conquers darkness. Love conquers hate. Nothing else. You know, we were just talking in the break about how devastating, how devastating this news in Oslo is. 93, 93 dead. Mainly children. Now, one thing that you, you have to um, take into account is in Norway, on this, at least on this island, no one had a firearm. No one. This guy walked onto this island with a firearm. No one else had one. No one could stop him. No one had one. Remember what I said a couple of weeks ago? The police cannot prevent a crime. They can only come in and investigate what happened. Occasionally, if they happen to be there, yes. That's why That's why in Newark, New Jersey, they're saying if you own a pizza shop and you want to be open after 9 o'clock, you have to hire a policeman, an armed guard, to be able to have your business open. Because that way somebody can protect you. Excuse me? I have a right to protect myself. Nobody had a firearm. Nobody could stop this madman. 93 people later, he stopped. Takes the police. How long did it take him? 90 minutes? Yeah, 90 minutes to respond. 90 yeah. minutes this was going on. People were, the, these kids were, were swimming across the lake trying to get help. Neighbors were coming and getting in their boats and going and rowing across the, the water to be able to grab these kids out. This guy was an, an absolute and total monster. A monster. You know, as much as you, I, I, maybe it's just me. I would never send my kids to a Republican summer camp. Never in a million years would I send my kids to a Republican Party summer camp. What are you, nuts? That's what this thing was, a, a labor party summer camp. I, I don't know why you would send your kids to that. I, I see that, uh, you know, my problem with, uh, you know, the Nazi youth is that was a party. The Nazis were the National Socialist Party. Is Europe not going to learn? Stop with the parties. Stop indoctrinating your kids with the parties. But as much as I don't want to send my kids to a 
a uh, Labor Party or a Republican Party or, or an Obama summer camp, whatever it is, I'm not going to send my kids there. But can you imagine the monster that it takes to say, you know, the best way to stop this is to kill all the children? Monster. Total and complete monster. So don't listen to anyone who says that, first of all, left and right in Europe is different. Remember that. They had kings. What changed in America is we got off the king track. We said, well, no, there's not a ruler over man. Man is the king. And so left and right was bigger government was the left. No government was the extreme on the right. So fascist communist is the extreme uh, left and no government is the extreme right in America. The progressives have tried to confuse us and take you out of control and take you um, out of, uh, you know, no government. That's ridiculous. No government, limited government, please. And try to bring us back onto that European model of fascist and communist being left and right. They're still there. This guy, if he's a hard right guy, it, it doesn't mean the same as it does here. And don't let anybody try to fool you on that. No, and of course the the left is you know going to attempt to pin this on you know the Tea Parties or so you know uh, which of course is expected. But I mean you know I don't the remember the last time I uh, was at a Tea Party and I ta- heard them talking about Freemasonry. Um, that's not the typical focus. Or um, you know how much uh, the Tea Parties just absolutely love isolationism. And, uh, you know, this guy was arguing very much for isolationism see, against free trade, right. uh, which is obviously, I mean, you're talking about libertarians. You're talking about uh, the free trade and capitalism. And he was in his manifesto video talking about the evils of global capitalism. Uh, I mean, it's it's the sort of thing that while he did say a lot of stuff about, uh, you know, terrorists that, uh, you know, that you might expect to hear from someone in the American right wing. Uh, you know, there's s- extraordinary amounts of difference as well. And, of course, that will be lost on the media. Of course it will be. Intentionally. Not yeah. not like it's not happening intentionally. I mean, I've read someplace that he was a, a religious zealot. Oh, yeah. He said in his uh, his own writings uh, in the manifesto that uh, I do not consider myself a religious person or something like that. It's not an exact quote, but it's pretty close. No, he's a religious zealot. No, it said he said himself his words. Not just words, religious, but Christian. No, yeah, he right, said in his right wing Christian. I do not consider so, myself a, a yeah. particularly religious person. No, but he was. No. Yeah, he's yeah, a Christian. They, he's I, a I read Christian, it. Christian I read zealot. It I read over it the too. weekend. I read it too. Yeah. That he's, he's a Christian, Christian a white mm-hmm. right wing Christian, Christian zealot. Yeah, mm, that's not what he says he is. I mean, now I don't necessarily yeah, but what trust does he him. Know about what he is? <laughs> well, seriously, <laughs> what does he know? I don't find him to be a trustworthy individual. Yeah. Um, but I will say that uh, his he wrote. I mean, he advertised this. Uh, incident, this this awful mass murder terrorist attack as his marketing plan for this manifesto. That's his what he says. Plan. It was his marketing plan for this manifesto. And of course, unfortunately, as we know, this works. When you go out and you do this, people do look at your crazy rantings and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, berate them and use them for their own political points, unfortunately. Uh, but the point here is that, uh, you know, that's not what this is about. We've said this over and over again when left-wing people have done horrible things like this. We've said it over and over again. You can't blame, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, Harry Reid because someone who has a similar viewpoint in one particular era des- area decides to go kill somebody, and it's just got nothing to do with it. It has to do with that person and their maniacal loss of perspective on life. Mm. He has. Um, he also plagiarized uh, yeah. the Ted Unibon. Kaczynski. Yeah, he if just... you're going to plagiarize somebody, then what? A, what better? What better person than the Unabomber to just you know, really get some good ideas from. And when you're going to yeah. write a screed or a manifesto, I think immediately you think <laughs> Ted Kaczynski. How, do, how much do I? How much do I copy from Ted Kaczynski? Yeah, it's it's yeah. just a matter of how much. The great whether thing, the whole thing or yeah. just about half. <laughs> the great thing too is he went in there and he uh, he just like control F and searched for the word like leftist and then just replaced it with Muslims. Like he actually, he just went in there and just. Did he really? Yeah, yeah. He, he just replaced multiculturalism like multiculturalism and and uh, Muslims. Yeah, he just replaced yeah. multiculturalism over like political correctness or something. Like he just filled in words. I mean, you know, and of course, you know, the Unabombers is the same thing. They tried to blame that on right wing, and you look at it, and it's very environmentalist. It's, I mean, it's bizarre. You can't, you can't 
assign these normal values to these abnormal people. No. You just can't do it. He wanted a change in society, and from his perspective, he needed a uh, he needed to force it through a revolution. He wished to attack society and the structure of society. I don't have anything in common with that. Do you? I don't want a revolution. Nope. I don't want to attack the structure of society. Nope. Um, his mother. I'm trying to find it. I'm I'm trying to find out where it is. Um, but uh, I can't find. Um, where his mother, who was a liberal, sent him to a um, sent him sent him to prostitutes to help him become a man. I was, yeah, I feel like I saw that story maybe on the Blaze or something. Uh, could be wrong on that, but I, th- I did see a headline on that. Uh, didn't get to the story, but it's he, it's typical. He said, "We, the free indigenous peoples of of Europe, hereby declare a preemptive war on all cultural Marxist multiculturalist elites of Western Europe." We know who you are, where you live, and we are coming for you. We are in the process of flagging every single multiculturalist traitor in Western Europe. You will be punished for your treasonous acts against Europe and Europeans. Um, In the manifesto, he uh, says in 2002 in London, a group of what he calls the New Knights Templar um, were, uh, were formed. The New Knights Templar. So what he's calling for are literal crusades. That, I guess, is where you get the Christian element. But if you're calling for crusades, may I ask how you're also pro-Israel? Yeah, I, he's not really pro-Israel. No. He's anti-Islam. He's anti-Muslim. He's anti-Muslim. He's yeah. anti-Islam. And, yeah. you know, he, and there's a huge difference. You know, pro-Israel uh, and anti-Muslim, there is a huge, huge difference there. Um, if you're pro-Israel... Uh, and pro-Jewish, there's also a very big difference there. Um, and that is something that we need to find. You need to be able to answer this question. Are you pro-Israel, yes or no? If the answer is yes, good. Are you pro-Jewish, yes or no? If the answer is yes, you go to the next one. Are you pro-human, yes or no? If you can answer all three of those things, yes, you're on the right side. If you answer those things, no, you might want to reevaluate. But you have to answer all three. I'm pro-Israel. I am pro-Jewish. And I am pro-human. Which means if the Jewish people in Israel were practicing genocide, which they're not, I then lose my support for Israel and the Jewish people because they're practicing genocide. And I'm pro-human first. If somebody is um, uh, Islam is saying, hey, I just want to coexist and I just want to live next door as peaceful neighbors, I'm cool with that because I'm pro-human. Somebody starts to erase somebody, I'm against them. Somebody starts to um, uh, a campaign to end somebody's way of life, I'm against them. I am pro-Israel. I am pro-Jewish. And I am pro-human. Make sure that you understand that. Because there's going to be a lot of people that come out and say, I'm pro-Israel. Or I'm anti-Israel, but I'm pro-Jewish. Mm-hmm. And why are you pro-Jewish again? What, why are you pro-Israel again? What, what is your... Why are you anti-Israel? What is, what, where is the depth on that one? Where does it go? I guarantee you, many people, pro and con, it'll come down, it really will come down to anti-Semitism one way or another. You have to be prepared and know what you believe. Because the old hatreds, as I told you last fall, in a monologue where I warned against this very thing and said it was coming to Europe, and specifically the Netherlands. Look out, it's coming. This is going to spread. And you must be pro-human, along with pro-Jewish and pro-Israel, because uh, it's coming under attack. Pro-Israel is not the same as anti-Muslim. Glenn Beck.